Howdy folks, from Lake Superior Big Top Chautauqua at the top of Wisconsin, welcome to another episode of Tent Show Radio. I can't believe another year's gone around us at a big top I see there high above the ground, belly Oh, belly Support for Tent Show Radio is provided by Travel Wisconsin. There's a million ways to have fun in Wisconsin and no reason not to. Visit TravelWisconsin.com and plan your trip today. And now, here's your host of Tent Show Radio, best-selling author, humorist, singer-songwriter, and intermittent pig farmer, Michael Perry. Howdy, folks, and welcome to Tent Show Radio from Big Top Chautauqua. Our featured performer on today's show is legend of a legend, Arlo Guthrie. We'll also hear from Minneapolis singer-songwriter Larry Long and the Blue Canvas Orchestra. Sometime around the halfway mark, I'll share a story about how sometimes you gotta call a blankety-blank a blankety-blank. We'll also feature a tune by our very own Blue Canvas Orchestra. Folks, the music you're about to enjoy was recorded in a special place in a special space. The Big Top Chautauqua stage stands square and true way up toward the tippy-top of America's dairy land, just two sips of coffee shy of Bayfield, Wisconsin. If you think, as I did for all those years I was figuring out what to do with all that binder twine, that Wisconsin is nothing but cheese and cows and cheese, well, I hope you'll wander up Bayfield Way and see for yourself some summer the deep green Apostle Islands in deep blue Lake Superior. Or try to catch a falling leaf come autumn. Or catch a snowflake on your tongue come winter. Just don't lick the pump handle. Whatever the season, it's beautiful in Bayfield. You ought to come on up. And once the sun goes down all summer long and into autumn, there's no experience like a live show at the one and only Big Top Chautauqua. Check the schedule and get your tickets at www.bigtop.org. And now, via beaming and streaming and theater of the mind, let's ease into the show with a song by our featured guest, Arlo Guthrie. Sings is all alone. 
I cannot even hear it clear And I believe before I understand Just what it is I know I'm leaving Take me from the chill of the of the evening Arlo Guthrie, friends. He didn't come all this way just to sing one. He'll be back. Our next guest hails from Minneapolis. His music speaks on behalf of folks who are often denied a voice and is a founder of what has come to be known as the Woody Guthrie Folk Festival. Ladies and gentlemen, a man whose songs edify and amplify. Please welcome Larry Long, and for his second number, his friend Robert Robinson. Now can you all say a wanna quay? A wanna quay. That means water woman. Could you say a kichida quay? It means warrior woman. It's a song I wrote for a woman named Awanaque, a water walker from the Medeoan people who just recently passed away. Mother Earth, I wanna quay, I wanna quay, I wanna 
seven generations from now to stand on that sacred ground. I want to quay, I want to quay, I want to quay. I want to quay, I want to quay, I want to quay. So much. You know when when my people from over in Europe came here, there, there were over 100 nations of sovereign indigenous people. 37 million. Now there's only 500 of those nations left. Over 34 million were slaughtered, lost their lives with the onslaught of those who came from Europe. Because the indigenous people refused to become slaves of my people, the Europeans, we then brought boatloads from West Africa to become slaves on these shores. And still today, fighting for the freedom with Black Lives Matter. Here's a song that comes out of struggle of civil rights. Please welcome Robert Robinson.
Larry Long, ladies and gentlemen, working with the inimitable Robert Robertson. We now return to a man who finds his way to the big top Chautauqua tent year after year. He'll be back at the tent this year, as a matter of fact. You could say he's earned his own flap. He grew up steeped in folk music and, as the son of Woody Guthrie, frankly grew up babysat by it. He first performed in public at the age of 13 and has continued to do so right up to this moment, for which we are grateful. Ladies and gentlemen, carrying on the folk pantheon, Arlo Guthrie. Uh, it's nice to sing some of the old songs, you know, when you get to do a tour like this and some of the old ones, uh, I had to relearn them. Uh, didn't know all of them. And, uh, whoops. Hey, before we get too far along, let me say it's been, uh, uh, this is a, a tour that uh, was going to be about a year and a half. We're about a third of the way through it. And uh, it's kind of a, a pleasure to be not just back to familiar places, but working with familiar people and friends of mine and neighbors, relatives. And let me introduce everybody up here. My friend and neighbor Bobby Sweet here on electric guitar and fiddle. My old buddy Terry Oliveri on the drums behind me. Another friend and neighbor Darren Todd on the bass back there. This is my son, Abe Guthrie, here on the keyboards. I've been doing this a long time, obviously. You, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Not quite there yet. <laughs> I'm working on it. Oh, man. I think I come up here to get older is what happens. I know. Don't remind me. It's hard enough remembering which birthday. You know, it's, when I was a kid, I remember, you know, hearing folk songs and folk song singers and stuff like that. And as a matter of fact, uh, my father, being who he was and all the friends that he had, uh, made it very easy to work in that, and to delve into that world, you know. And, uh, matter of fact, uh, we, you know, I realized at some point that most of the songs he'd recorded in life uh, with his friends with these old fiddle and dance tunes. Everybody already knew them. Uh, it's just that nobody had recorded them before because recording was new. And uh, so those were the songs I grew up with, you know. Uh, every, of course, every once in a while, he'd put out a record of songs that he'd write. And uh, so for me, when I was a kid, a folk singer was somebody that knew all the old stuff and might even write something occasionally. Although these days, when you think of the word folk singer, you genuinely think of somebody singing songs in the key of me, you know. I'm as guilty as the next one, don't get me wrong, but, uh, but I do like the old stuff too. And so here's an old one I learned from my father's best friend, a guy named Cisco Houston, back decades ago. Just an old song from New Orleans I've been playing for years now.
a high top Stetson hat It's a twenty dollar gold piece on my watch chain To let the Lord know I died standing back I want six crap shooters for my Paul Bearers And a chorus girl to sing me a song Place a jazz band on my first back here Just to raise hell as we roll Well, now that you've heard my story, I'll take another shot of booze. And if anyone here should ask you, I've got the gambler's blues. You know, my kids put together a list of my songs that they thought I should know, and uh, this is one of them. Looked into your eyes this morning, you were far away. You must have known I was looking for you, you knew you couldn't stay. All these winds. shoes, babe, walk around the clouds, you know that's where I'm bound to be now, I'm coming with the crowds, all these faces looking at me, looking through me, I don't mind, I just seen your face so hurry. Loved you when you cried Listening to Tent Show Radio. Listener, I've been rolling north to the big top for a long time now. I've got more favorite memories than we got shows. But once per show, I share one. This time, this time I'm thinking about the kind of hunger you get when you're out hiking or boating or just generally taking the air. And if you're doing it within range of water, big water, you get a special sort of hungry. 
And the beauty of this fresh air hungry is that all food not only tastes better when you're in this condition, the calorie count diminishes by two-thirds. This includes anything deep-fried in a tavern. This concludes my dietary public service announcement. You are welcome. Folks, this tent is a happy place, so I hesitate to be a downer. But I gotta talk about nasty people. I try to be nice because, well, because starting with mom, that's how I was taught to be. If you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all, and various behavioral variations on that trope. Let the other person go first. Don't make a scene. You might be mistaken. It's a long fall off a high horse. There were also Bible-based lessons about charity and humility, some of which linger to this day, no matter where and why I wander. Finally, I am genetically predisposed to introversion and shyness, both qualities that lead the possessor to avoid confrontation at all costs, especially cost to oneself. All of these factors conspire to make it difficult for some of us to believe that certain people are just plain nasty, as, from our standpoint, the predilection seems so unnatural. Make no mistake, I can be and have been nasty in short bursts, both intentionally and inadvertently, although responsibility for my own behavior renders the difference moot, but it is not my most natural state. All this to say that last November I had a series of encounters with a gentleman, term used in service of civility, not by strict definition, raising issues of greater concern to him than me, his concerns being minuscule, his conclusions misperceived, and raising them in a brusque and abrasive manner such that I suspected from the get-go we were never going to achieve rapprochement over my favorite tea set. Still, I sought him out steadfastly, face to face, and in good faith. It was like palavering with a pusillanimous porcupine. For the next month, I thought of him now and then, mostly if I happened to see his truck out and about, and each time, even as my lip curled and my stomach lurched, I thought, well... Maybe it's just me. The reflexive niceness, still unconvinced. I also had visions of him telling everyone he met what a block-headed jerkball I was, devoid of all empathy and understanding and prissy in my foot-shuffling rectitude. It ate at me a bit. Then last week, I was in a public establishment when a man I did not know tapped me on the shoulder. He asked my name, and I gave it. You live out by the old so-and-so place, he asked. Yep, I said. You ever have any dealings with his cousin, such and such? He asked. And now he had my full attention. Cousin such and such was none other than Mr. Pusillanimous Porcupine. I braced, ready to hear that this man and the porcupine were best friends and that I had sorely misjudged and misused the man. That boy is an A1... Redacted, definitive, anatomically based unpleasantry. Oh, how my heart leapt. Apparently my face lit up as well because my new best friend chuckled. Ah, he said, you do know him. I gripped his hand, shook it, and launched into a five-minute improvised monologue describing every repressed grudge, whine, and slight. Well, it was good talking to you, said the man, returning to his friends. Yes, it was, I thought. For the rest of the night and into the next morning, my heart beat with freedom and light. Mostly, Mom was right, but sometimes, some rare delicious sometimes, if you can't say something nice, gosh, what a relief to just let her rip. And now we're going to let the Blue Canvas Orchestra let her rip with a song featuring one of the tent's long-standing members, Bruce Burnside. I'll let band leader Ed Willett handle the introduction. We're going to feature Bruce on a couple of tunes here that he brought to us. And, uh, yeah, tell him about it. Tell well, him all about it. Yes, it started off. I started off. As a little child, remember that? No, I didn't that start off as awesome. a little child. <laughs> <laughs> I started off looking for a tune to play for the band and didn't find one, so I had to go back. Uh, no, this is actually uh, an old tune that we can't figure out where it came from. It's called Dark Holler. So, it's, odd, it's kind of a closet tune. <laughs> I'd rather 
rather be in some dark hollow where the sun will never shine than to be at home alone knowing that you're gone will cause me to lose my mind and blow your whistle freight train tear me far on down the track I'm going away I'm leaving today I'm going Bruce Burnside and the Blue Canvas Orchestra, folks. And now we turn the stage back over to Arlo Guthrie. He'll sing you a handful of songs, but you also just know he's going to lay some stories on you. It's the Arlo Guthrie way, and I want to give him the room he needs. Ladies and gentlemen, Arlo Guthrie. Yeah. 
and will be And the rhythm of the rail is all they feel Good morning America, how are you? Say don't you know me, I'm your native son I'm the train that call the city of New Orleans I'll be gone for Night time on the city of New Orleans Changing cars in Memphis, Tennessee Halfway home and we'll be there by morning Through the Mississippi darkness rolling down to the sea People seem to fade into a bad dream. The steel rail still ain't heard the news. The conductor sings his songs again. The passengers will please refrain. This train's got the disappearing railroad blues. And good night, America, how are you? Say That song was written by my good friend Steve Goodman from Chicago. Uh, wrote a lot of great songs, that guy. I remember he, he played me that song, City New Orleans, back around 1970, it must have been. And uh, he said, uh, Arlo, would you give that song to Johnny Cash? I said, sure. I did. Uh, I played it for Johnny Cash and... Uh, but Cash at that point had already recorded a whole bunch of train songs and didn't want to be stuck in the train song genre. <laughs> so uh, he passed on it, which worked out fine for me. <laughs> no, we've been through, uh, at least I've been through a, a number of, I've been doing this a long time now. And uh, it's kind of wonderful for me to be able to Thank you. Just to be able to keep doing it. I love uh, doing what we do. I like playing with my kids and with my friends and neighbors. All of my kids play and sing. Some of them are actually working over in Europe right now on a tour over there. Others are, everybody's making records and stuff. And there's something wonderful about that. It's, la it's a language. It's like learning a language. And you get to play it, you get to play with it. people from all over the world, no matter where they're from, whatever their story is, even if you don't actually speak and communicate that way, you can sit down and play some music together. I love that, you know. I remember uh, tonight we went back to the uh, fall of 1965, but I remember earlier that spring, that year, 1965, I had graduated high school, and uh, I had turned uh, 18 that summer. And I was playing in these little just sort of coffee shops, you know, out on the street, whatever, past the basket kind of joints, you know, like you would when you, any, anybody's 18, uh, even today. And um, I remember getting a call from some friends of my father's who I had uh, grown to love, a couple of fine blues men, Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee from the Carolinas. I love these guys. They were like uncles, you know, and uh, every time they would come to town, I'd sit right in front. 
and I'd watch them like a hawk, trying to figure out what they was doing. I mean, nobody played the harmonica like Sonny Terry, even, to, even to, by today. Nobody. Come even close. And uh, Brownie McGee was an awesome guitar player and never got the credit for it, but that guy knew his way around, and I would sit there. And they called me up that summer. They said, Arlo, we hear you're playing some music. Would you consider opening a show for us out on the West Coast? And uh, I was playing around New York and Boston, places like that, you know, where I grew up. And uh, I thought, wow. So I ran home to my mom. I said, Mom, I'm going to the West Coast. She said, no, you're not. I said, come on, Mom. I'm going to open a show for Sonny and Brownie. And she couldn't say no to that because it was like family. So she said, well, if you're going out there on your own, you naturally have to stay with family or friends. I said, Mom, we don't have family or friends out there. She said, well, then the next best thing. The next best thing turned out to be a guy named Ramblin' Jack Elliott. He had hung out with my dad for some years, took care of him on the road. My mom figured that would be a safe bet. But at 18, I knew Ramblin' Jack better than my mom. I was freaking eager to stay with Ramblin' Jack. I didn't let her know that, of course. Uh, I said, well, if I have to. So I flew out to Los Angeles. Jack picked me up at the uh, airport there, took me to his home. And he was in those days, uh, as he continues to be to this very day, a rodeo fanatic, as well as a great entertainer and stuff like that. And so he took me to his home, which was in Malibu, just north of L.A. at that time. And we put down my stuff in this house, walked back out the door, down the street to a rodeo arena that was right there. The Trancus Riders and Ropers Association was having an event going on that day. Barrel riding contest, you know, rodeo stuff. And uh, there was a parade coming by on horseback with flags and all that. And leading that parade was the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen in my entire life. Stop you cold, drop dead, drooling out of both sides of my face. I mean, I saw her way off in the distance, and she just kept getting better as she got closer and eventually just went right by without a look, without a glance, nothing. Her shadow come up, stopped in front of me, went around, and then kept going. <laughs> it was that bad. And I was so depressed, and Jack saw it in my face that day and took pity on me. He said, Arlo, take this. I said, what is it? He said, don't worry, it'll wear off. <laughs> I had some strange dreams that night. <laughs> I remember I got up the next morning, took out the 12 string set on a rock out there in Malibu and wrote this next song. Just thinking about that girl I'd seen the day before, you know, just daydreaming stuff. Of course, she didn't know it at the time. Neither did I, but we'd meet again. A couple of few years later, get married, have kids, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, we celebrated our, celebrated our 43rd wedding anniversary in uh, October of 2012. It's very nice. She was, she was quite ill at that time, but she lived long enough to get through that anniversary with me and all the kids and all the grandkids at this point. You know, it was a great life. i never forget the first time I saw her either in the song I wrote which I put on the first record I ever made a couple of few years after that. Here's one for her. Sail with me into the unknown void that has no end. Swept along the open road that don't seem to begin Come with me, love me, babe I may be back again Meantime, I'll keep sailing down this highway in the wind Evenings just begins the days And follows with the night Love you and to be with you To say that it's alright Love me while you have me, babe I may be back again Meantime, I'll keep sailing down this highway in the wind
There's times I feel like going Times I want to stay Times that I ain't feeling well And times I feel okay Now you have time for love, babe We may have time again Meantime, I keep sailing down this highway in the wind The fortune teller tells me I have somewhere to go I look and try to understand I wonder how she knows So I must be going now I'm losing time, my friend Looking for a rainbow Down this highway in the wind So I I went walking That ribbon of highway I saw above me An endless skyway I saw below me A golden valley This land was made for you and me This land is your land And this land is my land From California To the New York Island the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. This land was made for you and me. I've been singing this song since I was just a little kid, you know. That's a long time now. You know, I remember actually, I don't mean to stop, but I remember uh, <laughs> thinking, it's, you know, uh, you think about songs from time to time. And I remember thinking one time, people like going to places where something happened. Have you ever noticed that? It could be a famous battleground. It could be a miracle. It doesn't matter whether the event is good, bad, or indifferent. If something happened there, people want to go. Get a little taste of it or a hint. I don't know what it is. And uh, just to imagine, you know. And uh, my sneaking suspicion is that every time somebody goes to a place like that, they leave a little piece of themselves. So the next time somebody goes, there's even more there than there was to begin with. And it keeps piling up. Time after time, year after year, decade after decade, century after century in some cases. So you get anywhere near a place like that, man, you can feel something. It's real. I mean, it's palpable stuff. You're not making it up. I don't know if it has anything to do with the original event or the spirit of the people that have been going to see it or whatever. And I think the same thing happens with songs. I think that's what happened to this song. You write a song, might not be all that much to it, but you get enough people singing it over the years and decades, each time leaving a little piece of themselves somehow, so that eventually you hear the thing and there's a spirit to it. It may not have anything to do with the original thing. It might have to do with the spirit of the people that have been singing it all that time. And I think that's what happened here. I, I remember uh, hearing the story once my mom had gone over to China during the 80s when they was just getting opened up over there. She had been a dancer with the Martha Graham Company in New York, Modern Dance Company, and um, they were inviting these artistic people. So she goes over. She comes back. She says, Arlo, I was in the middle of China, and they brought out some school kids, and they started singing us some songs, and they started singing, This Land is Your Land. I said, Stop the song. My husband wrote that song. She must have drove them nuts. <laughs> I mean, she came back having three weeks, you know, be, and, and she hadn't slowed down one little bit. She was driving me nuts about it. And I just looked at her. I said, Mom, 
What are they singing it for over there? I mean, California. To the New York Island. She just looked at me with one of those mom kind of looks. She said, oh, Arlo. She walked away. I was left standing there feeling like my usual self. I knew she was right. I just didn't know why or nothing. But after a while, it come to me. I could see it just because it said California to the New York Island. Didn't mean it had to go the short way. I could see it going around back. Maybe up over the top or something like that. And, and, and then, the, then the whole world could be singing that song. Except America. I remember when I had that thought for the first time, I realized I didn't know any more after thinking than before I'd begun. But I never let it stop me. <laughs> Which brings me to this uh, last verse. I remember my dad took me out in the backyard and taught me this song when I was very young. Taught me how to play it on the guitar, you know, and when I had that much done, he taught me the verses everybody was singing. And when I had that much done, he taught me some verses that nobody had ever heard before. And uh, I don't sing them all the time. Everybody can find them now these days. But I will leave you tonight with the last one he ever sang for me. It goes something like this. Nobody living can ever stop me as I go walking my freedom highway. Nobody living can make me turn back. This land was made for you. This land is your land, and this land is my land. From California to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters, this land was made for you and me. This land is your land, and this land is my land. From California to the New York Island, very much. Have a good night. Appreciate your family. Support for Tent Show Radio is provided by Travel Wisconsin. There's a million ways to have fun in Wisconsin and no reason not to. Visit TravelWisconsin.com and plan your trip today. And by the Bayfield Chamber and Visitor Bureau of Bayfield, Wisconsin. Berry Capital of Wisconsin. Gateway to the Apostle Islands of Lake Superior, art galleries and studios, orchards, shopping and lodging, online at bayfield.org. And by the Bayfield Inn, located on the shoreline of Lake Superior, downtown Bayfield. Proudly hosting Bayfield's visitors for nearly 100 years. Rooftop deck bar and events for all occasions, online at bayfieldinn.com. From the top of Wisconsin, Tent Show Radio is a production of the nonprofit Lake Superior Big Top Chautauqua. Tent Show Radio is produced by Austin Hamilton, Michael Perry, Jamie Hansen, and yours truly, Philip Anich. Well, folks, that's our show for tonight. Whether you beam it or stream it, we thank you for listening. We're as grateful as a guy who found out that other guy is just the sort of guy I thought he was. We'd especially love it if you come on up Bayfield Way or down over or through for a live show. Details always available at bigtop.org. You can visit me anytime at sneezingcow.com. Until next we share the air, remember where I come from and here at Tent Show Radio, nobody ever says goodbye. They just say, well, I suppose.